Welcome back to my channel, Beautiful Hot Mess, where we talk about all things fabulous for the fabulous you. We talk about, you know, hair, all over hair tips and makeup tips, tick, ticks, tips. I do DIY projects. Um, I talk a lot about stocks. So it's a really fun channel. So before we get started, why don't you just hit that like and subscribe button here, 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 wherever it is. So now for today's video, obviously you see, I've got my little handy tool belt on. No tools in it yet, but they will be. And I am fixing my epoxy countertop. I did it last week and um, I found, I didn't like the way it looked. There was like little pockets, air pockets. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to tell you the process that I did to um, repair it. Now, um, you see I've got all kinds of stuff over here. This is where um, I'm using, using, using my stove as my table. Um, but anyway, so let's get started. Now here's a few things that you will need for your project. I love these little tacky cloths I found at Lowe's to pick up some of the dust particles, some rubbing alcohol, of course a sander and some sandpaper. If you want to use both, it's up to you. I actually preferred using the sander. I had to run to Lowe's because I had ran out of the attachments, uh, the, the uh, sandpaper attachments for the sander. And I found this multi-pack by Craftsman. Um, and it came with five, five pieces of sandpaper for I think $10. And it need, had everything I needed ranged from 80 grit, which is the roughest to 220, which was the smoothest. So it was perfect. And then the sandpaper, I just kept on standby and I had the same type of range as well from, from heaviest, um, sorry, roughest to finest. Then of course you always want your, your, um, painter's tape and something to, uh, a trowel to move the, and spread the epoxy. And now we're ready to sand the epoxy off. So I used the 80 grit sandpaper to start off with, making sure that I didn't go too deep and too hard on the surface because I didn't want to damage anything. I didn't want to damage the countertop and I didn't want to mess up my work uh, that I've already done, all the painting that I've already done. So I did that for a few minutes until I felt like I had a, the, it was a little rough. The surface was rough and um, it took off, you know, it's not gonna take off everything, but it took off a, a good amount. So then I switched over to the 120, which was not as fine, not as rough rather, and is a little finer. So then I went a little bit, I felt a little more comfortable going a little harder on that and putting a little bit more pressure with that. Always constantly getting down to eye level to make sure that it's, the sheen is gone and it's nice and smooth. I did that for a while and until, you know, until I felt comfortable. And then I ended with the 220, which the 220 is what gives it that smooth um, surface and that smooth like butter feel. So once I felt comfortable that everything was off, then I went on to my next step, which was pouring the epoxy. Fun. Okay, so now that the sanding is done, you are ready to, to pour the epoxy. But first, I want to let you know that I did change out my tarp to, because the other one had sawdust and dust on it. You want to make sure it's clean. And I forgot to mention, you will also need some kind of heating element, like a, a heating gun, which um, I just got from Walmart, as well as you want to make sure that the room is at least 75 degrees so that it will, the epoxy will mix properly. Okay, now my epoxy is all mixed, making sure that it's nice and clear and mixed thoroughly. And, and now I'm ready to pour. Um, I actually started at the back uh, of the of my countertop because it's such a, um, that part I always have a trouble with it because I wanna avoid drips. So what I usually do is just kind of dab, drizzle a few, um, drizzle the epoxy onto the sponge, um, the foam brush, as opposed to doing a pour. Um, it just is, it feels a little easier and cleaner, although I still did get some drips, but, um, cause I started to get a little aggressive, but that's what I like to do. 
Now, after I do the, 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 the back of the countertop, now it's time to pour the epoxy onto the rest of the countertop. And I like to do like an S shaped pattern starting at the back and making my way to the front all the way to the beveled edge. And this is where I said the more you epoxy you have, the better, because once you pour it and you'll find that it starts to self settle and spread out on its own. So that's why I, I, I had said, I, I feel like I should have probably made a little bit more epoxy to begin with, but you know, uh, next time I'll definitely do that. Then after I pour, I'm going to use my little trowel and spread it out evenly. And it just moves really nicely. Just like, a, it's like a syrup consistency. Make That's why you have to make sure you tape. And I, you know, I don't know, remember if I reminded you, but make sure you tape because that tape will act as a barrier and it won't, um, fall off the edge, you know, it would kind of pull at the edges of the tape. So I just do this until I feel like everything is nice and smooth and looks like a nice, uh, even finish. Uh, this part is one of the most important parts because if you miss anything, if you miss any pockets, this is, it's, this is where you'll get little holes or little, um, uh, little holes in, 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 in little air pockets or whatever. Um, and once you spread it, it's, you can't really go back because it's, it settles and hardens quite quickly. So you don't have a long time to work with it. So you have to definitely work quickly. So I just continuing to continuing to work with the trowel and the epoxy spreading it out, making sure that I haven't missed any spots because again, like I said, this part is so important because once you pour it, once it settles, that's it. You can't really go back to, to uh, spot pour, which is why I'm in this position in the first place. So I'm continuing to use the, the foam brush and the trowel. And I also go down to the, uh, to the level of eye level of the counter to make sure I, every, all the areas are, filled in because I found that it was, it's really hard to see if, um, if, unless you have a really good light. I use a light for, from the ring light and then the kitchen light, and it was still hard to see any of the, you know, imperfection. And also I think probably because I'm using a white, um, it was a white, uh, countertop, which is, you know, white with the, with the gloss is definitely going to be hard. So just make sure you do that because once it dries, that's it. And you got it locked and loaded and that's what you got to live with. So here we are and it's looking good. So now I take my heat gun and just kind of pop those bubbles. Just start from one side and go to the other. Again, it was really hard to see some of the bubbles. Some of them were easier to see than, than others. So I just pretty much decided, let me just do the whole surface and it's going to capture any of the, the little heat bubble, the little bubbles, because again, we, you don't want to have that in your surface because, um, it will dry with little looking like a marble, marbly kind of thing. And that's, you, you know, and that's what you don't want. And then I just kind of let it dry for about, mm, I think it was about 15 or 20 minutes before I took off the, the tape because you don't want to leave the tape there because once it hardens, if you wait till it hardens, it's going to obviously harden with the epoxy and then that's going to be really, really difficult to take off. So this is the next day looking really cute. I think I really love the way it looks. Um, the, the design looks really nice and still, uh, it's still uh, prevalent. It's I, so you, as you can see, I did not take off any of the design when I did the sanding, everything's still there. I just have to do the caulking when I'm, you know, when I'm totally finished, when it's a hundred percent dry and I'll do the caulking at the top. And, um, that's pretty much it. And I usually wait to let, uh, wait about seven days for it to dry completely. You don't really have to wait that long. That's not what they say, state in the instructions. But because I realized once you start putting vases and bowls or whatever you're going to put on your countertop, if it leaves an indentation, it's going to dry that way. 
So I would rather just wait a little bit more time, give it a little extra time to 100% cure, and then I will add all my fun stuff to it. And um, yeah, so that's it. I'm totally, imp you know, I'm impressed with myself. I totally love the way it looked. I'm glad I took the time to re um, take off the, you know, the epoxy and start from, so not right, not from scratch. That's the good thing. It really wasn't that hard. It took me like a day and then, um, and that's it. So thank you so much for watching. And I hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more DIYs and fun stuff. And um, bye for now.